Hello and welcome to this video in the series on solubility product. My name is Ari Kim and in this video we'll be describing the variables that can affect the KSP constant. Recall that the solubility product constant KSP reflects the concentration of the products of a dissolution reaction at equilibrium. KSP is determined mostly by the identity of the salt, therefore changing the concentration of the salts in solution will not affect KSP but will change the QSP until the solution is back at equilibrium. The relationship between KSP and QSP was discussed in an earlier video. There are only two factors that can change KSP, temperature and for the dissolution of gases only, pressure. For solids, dissolution of most solids into an aqueous solution is endothermic, which means that the reaction requires heat to proceed. That might not be immediately apparent, but consider this. What is the fastest way for you to get some sugar to dissolve into water? By heating it up. By applying the heat, we're shifting it away from the reactant side and favoring the formation of the products, which are the dissolved ions. After the temperature is stabilized, the solution will go back to equilibrium. Notice that there are way more ions in solution at a higher temperature, which means that the KSP has increased. Gases can also be dissolved in liquid as well, and will exist in a dynamic equilibrium with the gas above the surface of the liquid. For instance, oxygen can dissolve into water as noted in this reaction, and the KSP expression will be the concentration of oxygen aqueous only. In general, the dissolution of gas is exothermic, so applying heat to the system will shift the reaction towards the reactant, and the gas will come out of solution. After the temperature is stabilized, the solution will go back to equilibrium. Notice that there are way more gas molecules out of solution at a higher temperature, which means that the KSP has decreased. Again, let's use a real world example. What's fizzier, a cold soda or a warm one? Warm ones are definitely fizzier, which is reflective of the fact that there is less gas able to stay dissolved in water. The last factor to consider is pressure. Pressure isn't something you have to think about for solids or liquids since those are incompressible phases. It's only consideration for the dissolution of gases. Increased pressure will force the free gas into solution, thereby increasing the KSP after the solution has come to equilibrium. We can see this in reverse when we open a bottle of soda. The soda is packed under pressure, and when you open it up to the atmospheric pressure, you can see that the soda is much bubblier than when this container was closed. That's the dissolved gas coming out of solution. With these real life examples, let's apply this to the practice questions. We're asked to predict the condition for dissolution for the following reactions. For all three reactions, we want to shift the reaction to the right favoring the formation of product. The reaction in part A describes a dissolution of potassium chloride into potassium ions and chloride ions. The reaction is endothermic, as indicated by the heat on the reactant side. Therefore, increasing the temperature of the system will shift it away from the heat and favor the formation of the potassium and chloride ions. Part B describes the dissolution of magnesium sulfate into magnesium ions and sulfate ions. The reaction has a negative change in heat, which indicates that the dissolution is exothermic. While this is contrary to the general trend discussed in the earlier slide, the evidence provided by the enthalpy term must be used. You can even rewrite this with the heat term embedded in the equation like so. In order to favor the formation of the ions, you need to decrease the temperature of the system. The final part of this question describes the dissolution of carbon dioxide in water. Recall that the dissolution of gases are exothermic, so decreasing the temperature of the system will favor the formation of the dissolved gas. In addition to temperature, we can also increase the pressure of the system to force the carbon dioxide molecules into solution. Great job working through the conditions that can change the solubility of a solid or gas. Remember that temperature is the only variable that can affect the KSP for solids, and that temperature and pressure can affect the KSP of gases. 
make sure to follow up with some practice questions.